expanding on methods for tinnitus relief. At this point on the site, we've gone over any number of methods to get tinnitus relief. Just take a look to the left to see a variety of videos on the topic. Until now, we've been holding out a bit. Okay, not really, but we do have some updated information that should help just about anyone who has been searching for a method of tinnitus treatment that they can rely on to help nudge their symptoms down a peg or two. Our favorite method for relief is still tinnitus miracle. The book is laid out, it has an extensive explanation of each phase, and the overall value for those who have tinnitus, and even those that don't, is pretty high. With that said, let's take a look at some more methods of getting relief. For those methods that have been covered on the site already, we'll expand a bit, and for those that haven't, we'll provide plenty of information to hopefully satisfy your curiosity. So, let's get to it. Tinnitus Relief Through Diet The first method for relief that is fairly popular is to make dietary changes. This is really the first way that a lot of people go about trying to fix any problem. Plenty of people, from those with high blood pressure to high cholesterol, and even some proactive people who are concerned about losing their hearing or vision may make dietary changes to help remedy the situation or prevent a condition from setting in later on. This was touched on for just a moment on our post regarding alternative tinnitus remedies, but that lacks specifics. The following are three interesting dietary factors that may be linked to tinnitus. First off is vitamin B12. In a fairly often cited, but hard to find Tel Aviv University study, upwards of 47% of people with chronic tinnitus showed a deficiency of this vitamin. B12 has been linked to hearing loss in the past, and tinnitus is occasionally seen as an associated effect of loss of hearing. We can't give any recommendations for replacing the deficient B12, but it is certainly food for thought. Second is the effect that zinc deficiency may have on hearing difficulties. It is not uncommon to hear anecdotal stories of athletes who have been shown to be zinc deficient experiencing some level of tinnitus. Athletes are a prime population, due to their high training volumes and often very specific diets, to develop some vitamin and mineral deficiencies not commonly seen in the general population. Zinc can be a tricky issue to handle when choosing a path of dietary supplementation. But it is commonly found in a number of vitamin and mineral supplements at most drug stores and even quite a few supermarkets. Again, beware and go forward at your own risk. The third dietary factor that may be at play when it comes to finding tinnitus relief is through the supplementation of omega-3 fatty acids. The common source of omega-3 is is fish oil capsules or oil. These fatty acids have gotten quite a bit of press in the last several years for a variety of positive effects they seem to have on a variety of bodily functions. Everything from healthy brain development, eye health, skin, lowering inflammation, and even healthier looking hair, all seem to have a link to omega-3 supplementation. There is another commonly cited study from 1980, which is also very difficult to find online, linking tinnitus with a deficiency in this type of fatty acid. With all of the attention on inflammation in recent years, it would make sense if there was a link to inflammation, high blood pressure, or both when it came to tinnitus. Or, it could be something altogether different, such as hormonal influences that are affected through omega-3 supplementation. Whether or not supplementing can cure tinnitus or not remains to be seen unlikely on a case-by-case -case basis. But quite a few people seem to feel better when adjusting their omega-3 intake. Another mention of techniques involving sound. The more common method of using sound therapy is white noise. It's gotten a fair amount of attention on the site already, so we'll mention it here, and then refer you to one of the other videos for more information. Sticking with audio techniques, there is tinnitus retraining therapy, neurologic, and even the use of hearing aids in patients who have experienced actual hearing loss, and are now experiencing tinnitus as a result of this. The amplification of outside sounds by a hearing aid may help to offset or reduce tinnitus in the hearing impaired. While the common use of sound therapies is to help reduce the contrast between quiet and the perception of loud tinnitus for a person, neurologic may purposely induce tinnitus through a non-offensive sound stimulus to eventually, hopefully, desensitize the patient to the perception of the sounds. What is the best method for tinnitus relief? While we can't really name the best method to relieve tinnitus, our personal favorite on this site is still tinnitus miracle. 
It is a structured approach, the book is laid out, it's got some nice bonuses to help people get started with yoga, improve their sleep, arrange their diet, etc. We're not doctors though, and that is really the best place to start to be sure that you aren't at risk for other problems that could potentially be detrimental to your short and long term health. I hope you like this video. Thanks for watching are there any videos, in particular, you would like to see? Please let us know by commenting below.